Welcome. <laughs> we, we ain't afraid of no ghosts. This is your number one podcast for ghoulies and ghosties and long-legged beasties. Bringing you everything you need to know about things that go bump in the night and interviewing the personalities behind them. Make sure your doors and windows are locked. Now, here are your hosts, your ghost hosts, Scott and Julie. Hello, my friends, and welcome to another episode of The Paranormal Project. Hi, Julie. How are you tonight? I'm good, Scott. Hello, everyone. How are you? Hope you had a good week. Julie, Scott and I had a great weekend. We had a great um, weekend. hosted an event at America's Stonehenge in uh, Salem, New Hampshire, and uh, we went out there looking for ghosties with a bunch of guest investigators, so we had some fun. And we're hoping in a few weeks to maybe show you some of the, uh, ho hopefully, some of the stuff that we caught while we're there. <laughs> I see Jonathan is in the chat. He's in the audience. Hi, Jonathan. How are you tonight? He was there with us at the Stonehenge. So hopefully he'll, I don't know if he, he, he recorded any evidence or get anything. We got some stuff on the voice recorder. So I'm, I'm anxious to get through that too. And I get a few minutes this weekend. So, and, but tonight I have to show you, I'm wearing a different hat or actually I'm wearing a different shirt. This one says Hollywood Ghost Hunters. Woo, 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 woo. I wish I was there right now because I know it's a lot warmer in Hollywood. <laughs> but our guest tonight is the founder of Hollywood Ghost Hunters. He is an actor in Hollywood, stuntman. In fact, we're going to find out tonight. You can actually, if you really don't like the show, you can watch him get killed after it's over because he'll tell you which episode that's on, what movie he's in. And, and from what we understand, it was one of the grisliest on-screen murders ever seen. We'll just let you in a little bit. It involves a chainsaw. <laughs> and we met him in Scotland. And that's why we had a He's He just loves the country, spends a lot of time up there. He's an honorary member of Scottish Paranormal. And I said, I just got to get this guy on the show because he's such an interesting man to talk to. So, Chanel, would you bring Rick out? Hello, Rick McCallum. How are you, my friend? How you doing? Fine, Scott. I don't know about bringing me out. You know, it kind of means got a couple of different uh, connotations there, you know. My name's not Mikey, so I'm going to say that to you. All right. You're all welcome to the show. <laughs> Rick, yeah. I just had to learn to stop saying I hooked up with friends over the weekend. My 30 right. something daughter said, Mom, you really don't. You, you can say you met up with them, but please don't say you hooked up with people over the weekend. I, I don't know. <laughs> I wish I could say I hooked up with somebody over here. <laughs> That's a long time. Nobody will tell you. Nobody will tell you. I don't know who's about something, so I know who's going to do it. Rick, what's your connection to, to, I mean, we met in Scotland, but what's your connection to Scotland? Like, how did that all come about that you were going there and, and became a member of Scottish Paranormal? Well, actually, uh, we have uh, the McCollum family is pretty well known in Scotland. Um, ah. uh, the McCollums and the Malcolms. The Malcolms are very famous in Scotland, are the exact same family. Just one half decided they want a different name, more Scottish, which would be Malcolm. But we're all the same family. Mm -hmm. um, so I just wanted to go back and see my lineage because I'd always had a thing about sword fighting and everything else. And finally, I went there one time and that was it. I was toast. I mean, they, they hooked me really good. I, you know, I've, I've been back there seven times now and I usually go for a month at a time. You know, and, and did you just get up there and say, hey, guys, I want to investigate with you? I mean, what was the connection with Scottish Paranormal? Well, actually, uh, I had put something on Facebook, believe it or not. And I said, look, I'm going to Scotland. I want a ghost hunt. Who's going to hook me up? <laughs> and a guy named Brian Harley uh, contacted me. He has Premier Paranormal. And we went to a couple of places. And then he introduced me to the Scottish Paranormal people. And I started ghost hunting with them a lot. And we all went to... Uh, England together for a couple of hunts. Cool. And then the really cool thing is when I came back, a friend of mine was the manager of the real Mary King's clothes where we went on the, on the oh, tour. Really? Yes. And he and I ghost hunted that place by ourselves one night. That was very cool. Oh, and wow. then he, then he asked me if I wanted to do a, a para unity hunt there. And I said, well, I'm not paying what you'll charge me a rat. He goes, I won't <laughs> charge you anything. And I said, see, see how you are. <laughs> anyway, 
Uh, I called up Brian Harley. I got uh, two people from Premier Paranormal. I got two from, uh, I got Ryan and, uh, and Allie from uh, Scottish Paranormal. And I got three or four people from Anubis in England. And they all came over and they were kind of stunned because I, when I'm going to, when I do a para unity, I really do a para unity because when we got, when everybody got there, I said, okay, here's the, here's the deal. This is a para unity, um, you know, hunt. Nobody gets to hunt with anybody on their team for the first half of the hunt. So everybody had to have hunt with the other teams. And I mean, we had a blast and yeah. Scottish Paranormal is a very well-known group. I mean, they're world world renowned group actually. And uh, they even said, they said they've never had the activity down there that they had when we were there that night. So it's pretty cool. That's great. That And you know, Ryan, who is on, is it Haunted Scotland? Is that, is that the name uh, of the show? Oh, Spooked Scotland. Okay, because they're on Discovery Plus now, right? Yeah. And Ryan's coming on our show in December. I talked with him a while. I don't know if I told you that, but he's coming on the show in December. And I don't know that at the time that that they were on Discovery Plus. I don't know if that's new or not, but um, I think that was new. I think they were just exclusively in Scotland for a while, and then then it came bigger. Um, Ryan is a very cool guy. Well, nice you met him. I did. Yeah, yeah. That's why I asked him. Castle. Castle. It's fascinating. Yes, exactly. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, Belgoni Castle. That was fun. a few times. I mean, he showed yeah. us uh, St. Andrews and uh, the uh, speed tour. <laughs> and then uh, Belgoni Castle. And you know, when I was um, in Belgoni, I investigated with Ryan, and we were up in the I don't know what the room was, but it was up. It was, it was the uppermost room. Um, That's the Laird's the, quarters. The Laird's, the Laird's quarters. quarters. Yes, yeah. we were there. Yeah, so up at the top. Yes. And, and Greg, Greg kept coming through the spirit box. You know, who do you know? Who do you want to talk to? Greg, 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 Greg. It was it was interesting? You know, so yeah, he must. Place, been, that place is something. I gotta tell you, man. And you've seen the rest of it. I mean, uh, uh, the poor guy passed away. I feel kind of bad that he had that he's gone. But you 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 know you met him in his own personal quarters and. Did he live like the rest of the house? I mean, is it was it all sort of the same, or were parts of it a little more modernized? Or well, no, it was all castle everywhere. All castle. Um, matter of fact, the place that you upstairs ghost hunting was his former bedroom. Oh, no that's, that, that was where he lived up there. Okay, that the makes a lot of sense. We got a lot of activity there, especially what we did find when we were there were um, the women got a lot more activity. We think that we were communicating with women of the time, um, discussing, you know, the the norms of the time and manners um, and that type of thing. And at one point we did get an EVP that said not invited. And then after that leave. So we were told we had not been invited for tea. <laughs> I didn't know that was his bedroom. I mean, I wish I had that kind of activity in my bedroom. It's a lot less dead here. You want someone to serve you tea, Scott? <laughs> that exactly what I had in mind, but you know. Well, you know what is funny? The first time I was there, uh, the Laird and I made a really strong connection. Yeah. I mean, just for some reason, we just really bonded. And he asked me, and I had fallen in the in the forest, and I need a knee replacement. I could barely walk. Oh. And uh after I talked to him for a while, he looks at me and he goes, do you think you can walk up three flights of stairs? And I said, you got handrail? He goes, yeah. I said, yeah, I can make it. He goes, come on, I'm going to show you my private quarters. And while we're going up, Gregor walks up next to me and goes, he's never shown us his private quarters. <laughs> really? <laughs> uh, yeah. So we got to be really, really close. I mean, he told me a few secrets that are earth shaking. And I can't tell anybody because I promised to keep a secret, but I, yeah. they are, this secret is about as big a secret as you can find. And I mean, it's amazing. But the fact that he trusted me in these things, you know, uh, when we were there, we all hunted and he was in, he didn't live upstairs anymore. He lived downstairs because he was 92 and bed bound. Yes. And afterwards, uh, Jay Bloomkey, Kathleen Burns, mm -hmm. Cheryl Plum, Mikey Thompson and myself, went in and talked to the uh, to the Laird. Mm -hmm. And I hadn't seen him for a couple of years. I thought he might have forgot me, right? And we're all standing there talking, and he looks up and he sticks his hand out. And I reached out and held his hand, and he pulled me down, right? And he said something to me, and I said something back to him. And I went, 
I got to go outside. Allergies. Then I left the room. <laughs> <laughs> oh, but the, last, there's, the story is in my book, the, the one that's coming up. Uh, I went back there a week later for a uh, hunt that Scottish Paranormal was having, and I was the celebrity guest. Notice the thing. <laughs> uh, but anyway, while we were there, when we got done, uh, Gregor and I went in to see the Laird again. And as soon as we walked in, he goes, hi, Gregor. Hi, Rick. He says, you know, it's nice that he knows my name and everything else. Yeah. Um, but we were talking and he reached up and held my hand again. And I was looking in his eyes and I could tell without him saying anything that he was saying goodbye. He knew. Yeah. yeah. And uh, when I left, Gregor gave me a ride back in Edinburgh. I said, uh, I'm not going to see him again. And he goes, no, I don't think you will. Yeah. So. But it was, I mean, you talk about a moment. I mean, right. right. But isn't moment. it wonderful that you had that moment and you have that now in your memory? Oh, yeah. Yeah. What a wonderful man. Absolutely wonderful man. You know what he did? A lot of people don't know. He was a wood carver. He carved all the doors inside. You, you got to be kidding me, really? Yeah. Wow. And he painted all those crests in the, in the uh, Laird's room, the 31 yes. uh, other Laird's. He did that. He actually represented Scotland in the leather working contest. Uh, no kidding. But, but this, this is what makes him such a unique man. He built his own coffin and it was in his bedroom. Come on, really? Wow. Yeah. And wow. what he did is he had the, his birthday on there. And mm -hmm. every January 1st, he would write down the new year. You oh, know, he'd get rid of yes. the other one and he painted the right. new year. So. Oh. I mean, that's amazing. That's yeah, absolutely yeah. amazing. Yeah, that in itself man. is a story, Rick. <laughs> it is a story. Yeah, wow. Wonderful, his, wonderful man. Is his son moving in? He has a son, right? Yeah. Yeah. Stuart. Stuart lives there. Oh, he does live there. Oh, okay. Yeah. I think he does because he's he's yeah. always there when we're there. Yeah. And Kelly is his uh, daughter in law. I don't know. Mm -hmm. it, you know. She's there most of the time, so I don't know if they have a residence there or not. Now, are they buried? In, they're not buried in that chapel, right? Is it, it, it because his wife? I know there was a plaque or there was something there that said Margaret on it, but she's not buried in that chapel, is she? I don't think so. No, I don't. I don't. I don't think I remember I've that. I've never either. heard anybody say anything about it being buried yeah. in there. I it's have heard. Yeah, I have heard from uh, Gregor that. Uh, there is something buried under the chapel. Yes. You know? Yes. Okay. Maybe is that what I, I think that that's what you're from? thinking, Scott. Um, we talked about that when we we're in the chapel. And I remember standing on the floor and saying to you, saying to you, someone is underneath. I'm get, I, I kept getting I the word underneath, getting underneath. Yeah. And then I, I believe it was someone from Scottish Paranormal came in and I asked them about it. And they said they weren't sure, but they thought that there was someone buried underneath. Well, and the other thing know, is there might be something buried underneath. Right. Who knows, you know? Right, right. That, that right. wing, for whatever reason, yeah. was like a tomb. Perhaps you know Rick I mean? yeah. knows something. <laughs> <laughs> something buried underneath. Perhaps Rick is telling us a little something there. <laughs> be my guess, it's something and not someone. There you go. Interesting. Yeah. Now, what it would be, I have no idea. But I, I mean, know. right. right. There's lots of, lots of uh, historical treasures in Scotland that nobody's found. Ah. It's just amazing, though. Just amazing, yeah. really. Yeah. And it was great that we had the opportunity. I mean, I didn't get a chance to meet him, unfortunately. But I, you know, it was great to have that opportunity to be welcomed into his home. and, and Well, I, I really would have wished you guys got a lot more time to ghost hunt. I mean, you guys got ran through there like a car wash. I mean, it, it was, was quick. It was quick. You know, yeah. it was quick. I don't think our bus driver was terribly, uh, what's the word I want to use? Um, Enthused about ghost hunting. <laughs> well, not, not, not so much that. Flexible was more the word I was yeah. going to think. I don't think they were willing to stay or do anything. You know, they just kind of... <laughs> All right, let's yeah, go. Get back. Well, you know that uh, Jay, Jay, and the rest of us uh, uh, filmed a stream for Dark Zone TV. Ah, and, okay. I think I knew we that. Found, right? Yeah, and you know where the, everybody was saying the uh, the spirit in the chapel was throwing the women out. Yes. Uh huh. 
you know, I went down and I was talking to Jay and, and uh, the rest of the people. I said, you know, I, I don't get the feeling he's a bad guy. I get a feeling that he's lonely. And the story was that he was a priest and he was very disfigured. And he hated women because obviously they probably shunned him. You know, he probably. Right. Yeah. But anyway, we were sitting. I can't remember if it was me or Jay that came up with the idea. And I said, well, you know, or whoever said it, let's send Cheryl in there by herself. So Cheryl, to her credit, went in there and sat on the floor cross-legged right in the center of the, uh, you know, right in front of the altar. Really? And uh, we waited like 10 minutes. And then I I went in with my FLIR camera and I wasn't picking anything up. And then Mikey came in with his DR60 recorder and Gregor came in. And we started asking some questions. And uh, this is, I hope you don't mind this, but it's going to be on Dark Zone November 12th at 5 o'clock my time. And okay. they're going to show the whole thing. And what happens in the chapel is incredible, absolutely incredible. Really? Because the spirit, David, was answering our questions, one after the other, after the other, after the other. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Wait, David? <laughs> is David, a, a, is he a resident spirit there that comes through all the time? It's such an odd name for a... Well, David is the misfigured priest. Ah, okay. All right. Okay. I was... I was curious who that who that was well, you know uh julie was saying about the women there is a uh, woman that is known very famous woman known to be in um Algony castle and that's mary sybil and if you can't if anybody said mary up there that is probably her you know that i i honestly think that we did get an evp that did say mary yeah. i would have to go back to to look um and i'm not sure who who did get that EVP, but it sounds so familiar. Well, the very first so time I had gone ghost hunting with the uh, Scottish Paranormal, they take me to a cave in uh, in uh, West Wemus, right on the ocean. And I went in there and, and he says, uh, I took out my K2 meter and he goes, that doesn't work in here. I said, oh, I said, uh, who's, who do you know my senior? They said, well, Mary Sybil, we, we find in here and at Belgoni. And I just said, Mary, are you here? And it went off all five lights. And I started asking some questions and they're looking like, what? Right? <laughs> so when we went over to Balgoni, I walked in, I said, Mary Sipple, I think I, I talked to you over at the cave. Are you here? Bam, all five lights. So I started talking and they were putting other stuff up. And finally, you can hear me say, Gregor, come over here. I don't know what other questions to ask her. <laughs> <laughs> But you know, you had very good luck with the K2. I remember, was it Inverary Jail? Where were we? We were together up in the second floor. I think that's where it was. I think it was the jail. I think it was Inverary Jail. Inverary Jail. And yes. and we were communicating with the K2. And I don't think, I mean, I've used a K2. I don't think I've had that kind of communication before. I mean, it was really quite well, it, It's really funny because I do get amazing interaction with it. I've, I've shown some of the tapes that I have of it. People just go, holy crap. That's, yeah. That's amazing. But uh, I, I don't know why. Uh, I think one of the reasons, one of my techniques, whenever I go in somewhere, the first thing I do is introduce myself. I say, my name is Rick. Sure. And then I hold the meter up and I explain how it works. Right. And I say, if you want to communicate with, all I have to do is come up close and light up. I'll know you're here. I said, if I ask you a yes or no question, make it light up. If it's no, just stay away. And we can communicate with the yes or no answers. Mm -hmm. And I get it everywhere. When we did the LAPD museum, mm -hmm. um, they had been filming the first two days. They had Susan Slaughter, Brandon Alvis, and Kristen Lumen, and I came in on the third day. And they had borrowed my equipment because Susan Slaughter's had gotten melted inside one of the storage units, right? So I, when I got there, I picked up my K2, and Brandon Alvis says, and he goes, you can't use that in here. He says, we use it for two days. We never got anything. I said, really? And we walked downstairs and I said, this is where Walter is. Right? They said, yeah. And I said, Walter, are you here with me? Boom. And they went <laughs> and they looked and I said, well, just to make sure I'm not standing in hot zone. I went and stood in the corner. I said, are you still with me, Walter? Boom again. So every time I'm down there and I ask for Walter, it goes off. So me and Walters became friends. So I would think, I would think. So what happened to, I mean, I don't know if anything happened to it, but we did that little investigation. It was sort of a trial run for Belgoni, I think, but we were at, um, Earth, was it Earth Castle in the castle itself and you guys were filming? Did that yeah. make, did that, any of that make the light of day? Is that, or is that sort of just a trial run? You know, I don't know if that's, if that's going to be in it or not. Uh, it may be. Um, 
but in my book, I have all the uh, the responses we got to everywhere we went. Oh no, kidding! And uh, Kat Hobson, it was really yeah. it was really talking to her. Uh, uh, Mikey Thompson, it was talking to Cheryl. Got answers. Lori was getting everything on her SLS camera. Um, they were kind of freaking out because I walked over and they had a trifield meter and I put my K2 next to it and I said, "All right, if there's any spirit, I want you to come directly in front of me to this K2." And it went off all five lights in the tri-field meter, which is only that far away, isn't going off. And they're going, how is that possible? Right. I, said, I said, didn't you hear me ask them to come right over in front of me? Yeah, sometimes they listen. That's it's it. It's incredible. Yeah. Incred and I think we all have our, our own favorite um, pieces of equipment. You know, um, I love the Mel meter. I always get some really good stuff with the Mel meter. Mm -hmm. But again, I use it the same way that you use your K2 is, you know, and I have the Mel meter that has the little REM pod in it and, you know, come closer to say yes and step away to say no. Um, it's about the same. But yeah. Uh, yeah, I think we all have our own little pieces of equipment that we enjoy using. Yeah, it's, it's really interesting. I have developed them some techniques that uh, I have never seen anybody else use. And I just showed it down at the Orange County Paracon and people were even going, gasping when they were seeing some stuff because this was a uh, piece of uh, video that I got. Mm -hmm. And I was two, two floors below ground in a hotel in Edinburgh. And one of the guys who worked there had taken me down there and I gave him the K2 to hold, right? And I started talking and it was answering, I mean, really answering everything I was asking. And the first time it went, it got all the way to five and it just stayed there. And I just went, go back to one. And it instantly goes back to one, right? <laughs> so then I'm asking all these things and finally he's holding the, the K2. And I said, if I start counting, I asked if there was more spirits and it went off again. I said, when I start counting, can you make the K2 go off when I'm at the number? And I go, are there two? It goes all five lights, right? And my friend looks at me and I go, three, four, five. And it's not lighting up. And he's looking at me like, right? And then I went, two, boom, all five lights again. And then he goes, oh, I did it. <laughs> yeah, so, yeah. That's great. I have to I say, I enjoy doing that. Yeah. I use um, divining rods and I enjoy doing that. I call it my parlor trick. I enjoy doing that, holding one rod up, asking how many spirits are here and spinning the rod around and seems to work every time we get the same same answer every time we try it. So it's well, it's I always have... a lot of fun. I love to shock and amaze people sometimes, Rick. What can I say? <laughs> well, that's the fun of it. Um, I actually have a pair of divining rods that Matthew Sorge might be sort of gay, it's S-O-R-G-E, had made for me. And it's so funny. I show it to people all the time, like we're at the LAPD Museum. And one girl there, uh, Melissa St. Hilaire, had her own. And she goes, Rick, do you ever use these? I said, well, they don't really work for me. And she goes, what do you mean? I said, I'll show you. And I picked it up. I'm holding them out in front of me. And I said, will you point to the biggest energy in the room? And it goes, <laughs> 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 and I went, go. that happens every time I am. Oh my gosh. So, <laughs> so are you going back for Christmas? Did I see that? that you, are you thinking about, about it? it? I really am. Uh, the only problem is over there, if there's any Scottish people that have a good idea, please hit me up on Facebook. Mm -hmm. um, I have some good rooms set up, the Motel One right there on Princess Street. Now, I don't know if you guys know this, they have a huge blowout for Christmas. They oh, put yeah. up like skating rink, a carnival, right there in the Princess Park. Wow. You know, right from right down from uh, uh, the Edinburgh Castle. Yeah. And they have hundreds and hundreds of vendors. And it's all lit up with Christmas lights. And it's like a half a mile long of all this stuff. And at night, they shoot off fireworks from Edinburgh Castle. And then for Hogmanay, that's the first three days of uh, the new year. Mm -hmm. They have a spectacular. Uh, you know, fireworks show where you can see from everywhere in the city over oh, Edinburgh wow. Castle. So, you know, I'm, I'm, you know, my sand in my hourglass is more on the bottom than on the top. You know, <laughs> so I'm starting to think, you know, if I'm going to get to do these things, I better get, get, get to it. Do it. Do it. Is What's the weather like in December? Is it frigid or is it? No, it's, it's probably around 48 or 50. 
Oh, that's not oh, bad. I live in New England. That's nice. No. Yeah. It's like 48 or 50 below by that time over here. <laughs> yeah. well, I tried to explain to a lot of people when we were going to Scotland, they said, well, what's it usually like? It's usually about 60 degrees. I said, but it doesn't feel like 60 degrees. I said, even when the wind's blowing, it's going to feel like it's 70. And they go, well, and everybody's going, it feels warmer over here. <laughs> Funny, we're a lot closer huh? to the sun. You know. Yeah. Now, uh, if you go, would you just be there for a short time? Or do you stay for a while when you go to when you go to Scotland? Well, uh, the one the reason I was talking about, you know, if anybody has any good hints, um, the uh, hotels on the weekend there uh, during Christmas and stuff like triple their rates. Mm. And if I'm going to stay there for two weeks, I mean, the two weekends would cost me about twelve hundred dollars. Yeah. And that's just kind of a lot time. to pay for four days. Right. right. So I'm considering, well, it wouldn't be Scotland. It would be England. But if you were there, I might take a trip north on the train or something. I don't know. I'm thinking in February, actually, mm -hmm. of going. I want to go to um, the Arthur Finley College and spend uh, some time there doing some uh, metaphysical study work. And then, you know, you're there, right? So I probably would uh, see what else is going on for a few days before I head back to the States. Mm -hmm. So I'm, I'm considering and I haven't planned anything yet, but I've taken the train from London up to Edinburgh. And I mean, it's spectacular. Is it? There, apparently there are two routes and the longer route is the coastal route. And it was recommended to me to take that. And the scenery is absolutely amazing. How Once long? Once you cross in, it was about four hours. Oh, that's not so bad. About, no, and it was a, a very comfortable train. I mean, you can, you know, get food and drinks. My daughter could get a glass of wine. <laughs> and just once you hit the, the coast, lower Scotland, and you see all of the ruins along the the ocean i mean it, it's it's along the water it's just absolutely breathtaking it's really a wow. beautiful beautiful well, train you know, a lot of people a lot of people don't know that uh scotland was voted the most beautiful country in the world was it really oh, yeah okay wow. i'm honestly i'm not surprised um when not this trip but when i went pre-covid um i did have a chance to go up we were this the trip that we all took together we were in the lower highlands but i had the opportunity to go up into the upper highlands and it was just absolutely magnificent i mean yeah. so so beautiful scotland, scotland is amazing matter of fact next year right around the end of may i'm planning on going back and there's i want to take a hike down the west highland way which actually goes from uh, Fort William, which is right outside Glasgow, all the way to the Highlands. It's 96 miles. Oh, and it's wow. a hike. You walk it. So I'm looking that, forward that to that. That is a hike. That is a hike. Yeah. <laughs> wow. Highlands, is, I, it, truly, truly, I, I could not have even comprehended how beautiful they are. And I'm sure if we had gone even further north, it would become even more spectacular. It was, yeah. it, 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 it's beautiful. It really if is. You, if you went up near Loch Ness, you'd go right through all of that and you'd see everything. Else. That's where I went up to Loch Ness. Um, yeah. We took a trip up to Loch Ness and beautiful. And of course, I took I took the boat, you know, we took the crows on Loch Ness and yeah. There's Not a picture a of me boat. looking at the sticker on the window that looks like a monster, Loch Ness monster, you know, <laughs> typical I, tourist. I have a picture uh, from Loch Ness, and it shows, you know, the famous thing like this sticking out of the water. Yes. And it says underneath it, it says, Nessie, all-time undefeated uh, hide-and-seek champion. <laughs> <laughs> That's great. <laughs> yeah. So what's happening in Hollywood these days? I, You know, because that's the other thing people – you know, I'm, that just fascinates me. How did that all start? The whole stunting and acting and everything. Is that what you've been doing for years? And well, that's what I was doing for years, but until I blew my knee out so uh, bad that I, you know, one of the problems is I could still do a fight scene and all that. But when you get there to go do a, a scene, very frequently it changes what they want you to do. Oh, right? really? like you'll be there and you do a fight scene, and the director will go. Hey, why don't we, you guys, race up the stairs and you know you can fight up there and come down the stairs? Well, I can do that, but I can't do the racing up the stairs. Right. And the last thing I want to do is go over there and get out there and embarrass the guy who hired me. So, right. so it's I'm like pretty a stunt much needs a stunt man, right you now. Know? now. I'm just into writing and uh, yeah. stuff like that. Hunting you know, the I, I will still stunt coordinate a movie if they ask me, but. Uh, 
Did you ever do movies without stunting? I mean, you know, just like in a movie without the stunt work, or has it all been stunt work? No, no, I've done uh, well several several things actually, but uh, but that was stunts too. I forgot about that. Uh, a lot of things have been hired because I could do stunts, but uh, did, did a few fight scenes beating up little girls on a movie of the week. <laughs> What was so funny In is your that, love uh, to this day, Rick. <laughs> I got so much hate mail on Facebook. One person said, "Why did you do that?" And I just put down it was in the script. <laughs> I said, "You do know that I, do it. I don't know. <laughs> yeah, you do know I wasn't actually hitting those girls, right? Right, but, right. Yeah. <laughs> oh oh gosh. gosh. Well, we did promise people that you're going to talk about the most bloodiest scene that you you were a stuntman in that involved a chainsaw well there's more <laughs> to it than that i know there is so that's why i'd like you to tell the story <laughs> well for, first off the director adam green who is who is a great director and a great guy i just love that guy to death um he pulled a fast one on me right and i'll, I'll tell you exactly what happened when we did the scene um there's a guy like Jason, but it, it's Victor Crowley. He's a big, deformed monster, and Kane is playing him. Um, well, me and R.A. Mihailov, another guy from the Hollywood Ghost Hunters, um, he and I are the two real hunters of the group, and everybody else is just trying for the bounty, and they have no clue what they're doing. Well, the guy that's with me, Colton, uh, is the comic element in the, in the show. And I never say a word at all. The only thing I do is I turn and I look at the camera when we hear the chainsaw start up near us. And all you see me do this. You know. <laughs> <laughs> I, I don't say a word. Right? So anyway, here comes this eight foot long blade coming out of the thing. And here comes Kane. And I've got the shotgun and I'm blasting him. And you see, boom, boom. Right. And Colton's like shooting in the, into the trees and into the ground. He's hiding behind me, right? So just as Kane gets there, my gun jams. I'm trying to unjam it. And he takes the chainsaw and he sticks it between my legs. Well, unfortunately for Colton, he was hiding right behind me and it went between his legs. And Kane lifts up the chainsaw in the air and we get dissected in half. We just oh, fall apart, gosh. right? But... Here's where the big uh, surprise came. We had the, uh, the the premiere at the Egyptian Theater, and it was packed. I mean, to the gills. And I'm up in the uh, in the balcony watching. And here comes our scene, and you see the chainsaw hit me in the crotch and start going. And all of a sudden, these two balls start falling down on each side of my legs. And I just I just looked up and I went, All right, because they put it in, they put it in in post production. Right? Oh. And every time he would go mm, and go up higher, they would drop farther, and the crowd is screaming bloody murder. Right? Oh. And finally, on the last oh. scene, when he goes, oh. you, see them, you, you see them land on the ground. Yikes! And everybody, oh. I mean, it was people were screaming like crazy in a, in a packed theater, and I'm sitting oh. there going, "Well, maybe they didn't notice me." And everybody's like, "Turn around, look at me." I'm like, <laughs> I was like, oh, great, I'm going to be known as the guy who got his balls cut off. And, and, <laughs> and, and uh, that was the worst of, you know, that wasn't the worst of your issues at that point, you know, but, you know, whatever. But what's the name of that movie? That was Hatchet Number Two. Hatchet Number it's actually, Two. It's actually a quadrology, I guess is the way you'd say it. There's four, four things. And what Adam Green did was brilliant, right? Every time, like, part one ends, when part two starts, it starts up exactly where the other one ended. Really? Right? So you're just continually watching go to three and it's right where two ended and <laughs> things like that. And I'm actually one of the few people that was in all four of them, even though I did get chainsaw because I doubled Kane in there a couple of times. Ah, uh, okay. okay. <laughs> I Now we know what we're watching this weekend. We got to check it out. Oh, the, yep, yep. Get, well, get it's actually, it's a lot of it is uh, tongue in cheek. You know, because it's so over the top. You know, yeah. uh, Kane actually saws this one guy or uses a gas-powered uh, sander on his head. 
<laughs> yeah. Yikes. Oh my God. <laughs> Whole new meaning to a little off the top, right? <laughs> yeah, exactly. But you know what it is? It's so out there that it's not, you know, you're not going, oh my God, oh my God, like saw or something like that. You're actually really enjoying what you're watching. <laughs> That's funny. Oh gosh. <laughs> you know, and, and the whole Hollywood thing, I mean, th you know, obviously they're not cutting you in half, but how are they, is it, is it, do they stick your head on something after in post-production or how, how do they get you, no, you know? My head got cut in half too. Both of I mean, it went straight up. Mm -hmm. Got me and Colton, and we both fell aside. But I mean, is that all CGI, Probably. or do they have like a like a dummy body, or what is that? No, it, it was it was done with a dummy. Done with a dummy, yeah. Well, actually, two sets of dummies. <laughs> me and Colton were the original, <laughs> dummies, and then the uh, ones that they finished right. the software. Two sets turned into four, you know. <laughs> yeah. What's really wow. funny is uh, part three when it starts. It starts with Kane and uh, Danielle Harris fighting. Right? Little Danielle's like this big, but she's like, you know, she's like a, a mongoose. I mean, she's got no fear about anything. Right? <laughs> and uh, her and Kane are fighting, and she kicks him. You know, he's got her up in the air, and she kicks him in the chest, and he falls backwards onto the chainsaw that he used on us. Right? Oh, well, Justin. Kane was, out of, Kane was out of town, so guess who played Victor? So I got chainsawed two movies in a row. <laughs> wow. I guess I'm the Hollywood go-to chainsaw guy, I guess. <laughs> That's cool. Oh, Very my cool. gosh. Wow. <laughs> Good time. And so, you know, and I mistakenly told people last week that you were coming on the show and that you had, I don't know why, I thought you had stunt doubled for Jason, but it's not. You stunt doubled for the actor who played Jason. In Friday the Thirteenth, in other movies, is that is no, that not right? Friday the Thirteenth, I wasn't in any of those. You weren't in any of those, but the no. actor that played him was in other movies, and you stunt doubled him in the in other. Yeah, movies. well, he's the, he's the person who co-founded uh, Hollywood Ghost Hunters with me. Oh, I didn't realize that. Okay, yeah. actually, yeah. the three of us that started it were me, Kane, who played Jason, mm -hmm. and Ari Mihailov, who played Leatherface. So, um, our tagline for a long time was "The Dark is Afraid of Us." <laughs> I like that. That is good. <laughs> That's good. <laughs> so, so how active is Ghost Hunters? I mean, are you are you are no Ghost Hunters? Hollywood Ghost Hunters? Are you are you out doing stuff? You know, are they a pretty well, active team now? Or well, to be honest, we haven't been able to, to do much for the last couple of years because when we first started, we all lived right here, and now RA lives in Pennsylvania. Kane has moved to another state, so I mean, and Kane is always busy, right? So it's it's hard to get him out. I mean, we will get more hunts in again somewhere along the line. I mean, we we all want to do it, but it's just logistically a nightmare. Yeah, yeah, because you're all over the place. And you know, just to be honest too, I'm gone for a month a year in the prime ghost hunting time. So yeah, so that's what happens. Is I mean, do you have a big group or is it just a? Well, we had like twelve people in it. Perfect. Yeah. Perfect. Okay. And uh, right. it was like it was like we had like five or six people that went quite often together. Mm -hmm. That's usually you have a core group and yeah. then a few people. Yeah. And in schedules, of course, too. You know, we all have the infamous. Well, I don't because I just retired. But, you know, I keep saying that in case yeah. people are. You know, not tired of hearing it. I just retired, uh, <laughs> but we all had the infamous day job, and you know that was that. So we could only do what we could do. But and you know, how? When? When was it founded, Rick? How long has it been? Holy Hollywood Ghost Hunters. I think we started it in two thousand nine. Oh, okay. All right. We started it actually Mansfield Reformatory. Oh. Uh, we were doing a movie there, and Kate and I had gotten done. And it was everything was wrapped up for the night. And if you guys know Manfield's reformatory, the big prison. That's Ohio. Um, Ohio. We were all the way in the back. And it was really late. There was no lights on except for the stuff, the moonlight. And as we're walking back, Kane says, hey, let's ghost hunt. And I never knew he was into it. And I never told anybody that I was doing it. Right? Yeah. yeah. Um, so I said, sure. So we started walking around and found a couple little things that were really interesting. And uh, happened to see what looked like a shadow, and Kane takes off after it. And I was like, "Okay, I'm starting a group." <laughs> <laughs> so 
<laughs> that's cool. That's yeah, awesome. That, that's kind of where that started. So what are some of your favorite spots over in the West Coast? Because that's one place I've never been. And, you know, I've been to the West Coast. I've been to L.A. and everything, but I've never ghost hunted there. That's that's definitely something we should plan, Scott. We, we should, should try to get a group of people together and head out to the West Coast and kind of maybe Rick can help us, tell us where yeah, the I'd best be spots happy to help are. You. Uh, I will tell you the place that uh, is pretty unknown, actually, but it's very haunted is the LAPD Museum. Really? Okay. Yeah, I've been there like four different times. And uh, you have an in there, you know, you help us get into these places. Uh, maybe. 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 Okay. Uh, no, right. the person that I knew has changed over to another job. Gotcha. Yeah. Uh, and I, I was actually going there for Dark Zone with uh, Jay Bloomkey and Kathleen Burns. Ah, okay. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, but uh, the girl that was helping us there, she's she's moved on to another position at a different place, so I don't know. Um, but they're they're pretty open to that stuff and it's it's really haunted really oh. and and you especially scott will really enjoy it because we've been there with uh you know uh melissa saint hilaire who's mm -hmm. you know pretty well known uh psychic and she got quite a few things we had you know the people that were psychically gifted were really nailing stuff right and left so wow now, is it because of the objects in there or the energy? So. You think, yeah? I think so. Most of the objects in there, almost all the objects are some from the very famous murders and kidnappings and everything else. There's all the stuff from uh, Marilyn uh, Monroe's death, all the stuff from the Mansons, all the stuff from uh, the North Hollywood shootout where the two guys shot 1,700 bullets at the cops and people. Um you know all that all that stuff there's uh the onion field which is mm -hmm. a movie i mean there's yeah. all that stuff is in this building oh wow and any residual energy that might be attached to that is i can't imagine it must be off the charts yeah. what was the building before was it anything you know of any i think it, before it was actually uh one of the uh precincts Oh, okay. Oh, yeah. okay. Yeah. So, I okay. mean, you know, you don't know what went on there either. I mean, people coming in and out. And well, one guy hung himself in one of the one of the cells. We know that. Another girl, and th this was strange. Uh, we were there for the 25th anniversary of the North Hollywood shootout, right? And um, it was decided that we would show the ghost adventures thing that night about the LAPD museum, right? So everybody gathered around. We watched the, the ghost hunters, and something popped up that I didn't know, which is frequently the case. <laughs> <laughs> but they talked about how a woman in the firing range had gone in there and picked up a pistol and had killed herself. And they found the uh, article about it. Her name was Margaret. Well, when we got back down to one of the things, I asked, I said, is the lady who passed away in the firing range, made sure not to say killed herself, I guess she passed away, here with us and my k2 goes all cattywampus on me and i said uh, could you tell us your name and mikey was there and he's got the dr60 you know the, the famous one that's supposed to be so good and he plays it back and he said can you tell us her name and he goes margaret so i mean it was that's awesome yeah, yeah. wow but, i mean that is i think that's the most haunted place that i've been in california the omen house um, David Oman's house is right next door to where the Manson family did all their evil nonsense. Yeah. And yeah. Um, where they killed Sharon Tate and the other four yeah. or five people. Yeah. Uh, that's very haunted. I and, did um, see that on, I think it was, was it uh, Ghost Hunters or Ghost Adventure? I think it was Ghost Hunters did the it's, Omen it's, house. It's been, on, it's been on both, actually. Okay. All right. The, yeah. the house and what, Sharon, I was going to say the house that Sharon Tate was murdered in next is that gone or is there something yeah, they bulldozed it. the house they bulldozed is gone it. Yeah. Yeah. yeah yeah but this man built when they're bulldozing it, yeah. david was building his right mm -hmm. right right so, and so have you've investigated in there rick oh many many times matter of really? fact I, that could be probably someplace i could try and hook you up to oh, um, that would be amazing the other place is the queen mary out here uh yeah. yeah yeah because that's actually a hotel all you have to do is get a room and then go out and walk around and go something your little heart's yeah. content yeah. although in my book there there's a chapter that says the perils of wearing a hollywood ghost on his shirt 
in a haunted location. <laughs> I went there and I, I wanted to keep a low profile and go out on the deck after midnight and, you know, do some investigating. Well, I was there with my stepmother and her boyfriend and we went up, you know, in the front where the bar or restaurant was and they're playing karaoke. And I got up and I went to the restroom and two girls stopped me. They go, oh, Hollywood Ghost Hunters. You know, we saw you on Ghost Adventures. I said, oh, cool. They said, are you going to ghost hunt tonight? And I said, well, after midnight, I'm going to be up on the deck. They go, can we come? And I said, sure. Right? <laughs> so I go back inside and these two other girls call me over inside the thing. And they asked me if I'm ghost hunting. I said, yeah, I'll be up there later. <laughs> and then the weirdest thing, I was walking back and the, the ship is enormous, by the way. I'm walking back and I see four girls with a K2 meter arguing in the hallway. And I'm walking along and they look up at me and they see my shirt and they go, oh, wait a minute. Do you know anything about ghost hunting? I said, well, well what do you need? Right. <laughs> and they said, you know, do these things work? And I said, well, came to the right guy. Right. <laughs> said, Let me show you a few things. And after I was done, they're like, wow, can we do that? And I said, sure you can. You just have to make a connection with the spirit. Right. And uh, they said, are you going to ghost? I said, yes. <laughs> I had that night 14 people ghost hunting with me. Wow. Really? I was going out and going to keep a low profile. I think we definitely have to take a West Coast trip. I, it's been years since I've been out that way. And, and yeah, same, same you know, with me. Definitely. Said, never yes. ghost hunted. So these are some of the things that would be amazing. You know, I agree. Well, I would suggest David Oman's house. Yeah. And and uh, LAPD Museum for sure. And if you got enough time, go to the Queen Mary. Queen Mary is not as haunted as the other places. Okay. Because, All right. But it would be an experience. No, I mean, but, but it's a good experience staying yeah. over there. And you do get some stuff. But uh -huh. people don't understand. It's blocks long. There's a lot of places on there that could be haunted and you're not in them. Right. <laughs> yep. Yep. Right. Makes sense. Well, yeah. And I mean, I took one cruise um for seven days and i was just lost for seven days i the, the, those ships are huge so right. i can imagine how how huge the queen mary is <laughs> well i can tell you a quick story about the queen mary yeah when my mother came out bless her soul um she wanted to stay overnight on the queen mary so i got us reservations we went there and when we were checking in there were a bunch of young girls in prom dresses no guys just girls so i guess maybe they made them come on separate buses or something because it looked like a high school thing yeah right? And uh, we went down and our room was like three or four flights down and all the way at the back of the ship. I mean, we were like as far away from anything as you can be. Well, we got down there and we got our, got our room and put all our stuff away. And my mother said, asked me if I, they used to have a bakery on the ship. It's not there anymore. And she asked me, she says, can you go get me a donut? And I said, yeah. So I opened up the door and I'm leaning, leaning in the door frame, you know, so the door is open this way and I'm leaning on the door frame. And I'm asking her what she wants to drink. And I hear like what sounds like eight or 10 of these high school girls in full party mode, giggling and laughing. And, yeah, I mean, loud, right? And I turn around and look down the hallway and it's at least a hundred yards long. You can see there's not a person down there, right? Mm -hmm. So I did what any any uh, good ghost hunter would do. Mm -hmm. I went to each alcove and went yeah. and all the way down. Not a peep. Now, you have two choices of what that was, something paranormal or a whole bunch of school girl, school girl age prom people can be totally silent for the rest of the night. I'm going with the paranormal. I'm going with the paranormal. Yes, absolutely. Wow, that is awesome. That's that great. great. Rick, we, <laughs> yeah. we have about five minutes. I can't believe we've already like gone through <laughs> almost the entire show. We have like five minutes left. Where can Tell us about your books. Like, Where can you get them? I mean, I know you've got one that hasn't come out yet, and that's the new one. But yes, you have others too, right? Or at least I have one other one. one other I'm one. proud to say that it won the uh, Paranormal Book of the Year award. Cool. Um, so oh, that was pretty, great. Great. That was pretty Bravo. Uh, it's called Ghost Believe in Me, and you can get it at Amazon. Uh, the new one is called uh, The Spirits Are Out There and They're Waiting for You. Okay, cool. Great. And uh, the, the cover picture is a story in itself. When we were on the tour, at Earth Castle, we found out that there was a graveyard about a half mile away. Mm -hmm. And me and a bunch of the people went walking to the graveyard. And uh, do you remember Christine Augustine? She was with yes. Jay and uh, Kathleen. Oh, yeah. And yes. Yes. With the pretty curly hair. 
Yes. Oh, sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I know just who you mean. Yeah. He took a picture of me while I was ghost hunting up there in the cemetery, and it is gorgeous. So she handed it to me. She goes, do you like this? I said, yeah, it's going to be the cover of my next book. Right? I remember that. I remember that on the trip. You showed it yeah. to me, and I said, that's that's awesome. That's a great photo. Yeah. I mean, as soon as I – I mean, the instant I saw it, I said, that's going to be the cover. So I've when got you, it all done. All I'm really yeah. waiting for now is the uh, forward, and then I'll send it off to get formatted and edited. and. Away we go. How long does that process take? Like, when do you expect it to be available? Well, it depends on when I get the forward. Jay, <laughs> you know, when, you're watching. No I'm kidding. Well, no. When I asked Jay, he asked me how yeah. long did he have. I said a couple weeks. Sure. And then I really yeah. got crazy, and in like two days, I finished the book. So everything's ready to go. But that's that's, that's what that, I'm waiting yeah. for. That's um, great. And it's and it's worth waiting for somebody uh, of of. Uh, his renown in the ghost hunting world to do yeah. your forward. It's worth waiting. Yeah, I know. Absolutely. Because you know, he's got some, some major weight in the business and he's one of the nicest people I've ever met. That's and his cool. wife is even nicer than he is. Well, <laughs> <laughs> so Natalie, she's. Yeah, that's fantastic. So that'll um, be great. And then they, you know, they'll, they'll print it or do whatever they do. And, and uh, I can't wait for that, but I'm sure I'll hear Cause you know, keep up on Facebook, but yeah, it'll be up on, uh, yeah, it'll be on Amazon again. Yeah, that'd be great. And the, the books generally sell pretty good in the UK, so that's uh, that's oh, always nice. Nice, and it's and it's all true stuff. I mean, it's your own kind of like experience. Every word in there is true. There's some yeah. things in there you won't believe. I, I mean, there's some things in there I don't believe, and they happen to me. Right? <laughs> <laughs> you know, we have those moments. That's that's well, so it's, great. it's definitely on my Christmas list, Rick. <laughs> Well, you know, you guys have a hookup for the book, you know. There we go. Yeah, yeah. I I happen to, I know a guy. I know a guy. (laughs) I know the guy too, so I know you're in good. That's all right. Yeah. I I am so thankful that you came on tonight. This is great. I just enjoyed catching up and chatting about, you know, the stuff we did, the stuff you're doing. And and certainly we need to make a trip, Julie, out that way so that we can. uh, Absolutely. Oh, absolutely. Yep. Gather a couple couple of people and, you know, make it a nice little group trip. I have another idea for you, too. There's another place called the Glen Tavern Inn. Oh. Okay. And it's about 80 miles from L.A. Okay. And it's this old time inn. And when I was up there, I don't know how, if we have enough time. I'll say real quick. We went into one of the rooms, and I asked if Calvin, who was a cowboy who got shot for cheating at cards, I said, Calvin, are you in here? And we get on the recorder. Yeah. Oh, no. Nice. I said, well, you're not going to do anything funny like try and crawl in the bed with me or anything, are you? Goes, no. <laughs> like, you can hear you know, the disdain in his voice. Oh, my and God. I said, no, Calvin, I'm liking you better and better. And he goes, all right. I said, all right. But are you, do you know Matthew McConaughey? McCone? He says that all the time. Yeah. And you know what it said to me? F you. Oh, no. <laughs> oh, my God. We have it on tape. I mean, it was like. And then you go, and then you nose. have it. <laughs> Uh, well, that sounds like a great road trip. I'll navigate, sure Scott. Does. There you go. Oh, you good idea. <laughs> we'll end up in Alaska. Rick, so, thank you so much for being here. You know, we, we just get just a couple of minutes left. Left, uh, friends. Don't don't forget to join us next week. Our guests are going to be Andrea Perrin and Jacqueline Nunez, and we are going to be talking about the Conjuring House and all the Halloween festivities. And of course, Rick, you know, Andrea was with us on our trip. I'm going to be at the Conjuring House. On Halloween with Julie, we're going to do, be, well, do on the thirtieth. We'll be yeah, we'll be there on the thirtieth. We're going to be doing some filming for a future show, and I'm going to be in New York with my producer. So thank you for being here. It's a wrap, folks. Rick, thank you so much, and thank we you, will Rick. talk to you all soon. Have Anytime, a great day, guys. Everybody. We'll see you in LA. <laughs> it's good seeing you again. Same. Same. You have been listening to the Paranormal Project with Scott Allen and Julie Finn. Be sure to subscribe so you don't miss the next episode. While you're there, leave us a rating and review so others can find out about the show. Stay haunted and go out there and explore the paranormal.